Okay, here I am with, I'm sorry, what was your name again? It's Joyce Wilson. Okay, and what organization are you here with? I'm here with the People's Army. We're a coalition of uh, several groups from the Flint area and in Michigan in general. Um, I'm with Neighbors United as a block club. We do community cleanup beautification projects. We have assisted in bringing uh, grant monies to improve a basketball court, baseball diamond, and to start raised garden beds by a senior citizen center in Flint, Michigan. Uh, we're working with veterans, and our sole purpose is to bring attention back to the fact that Flint, Michigan still does not have clean water coming out of the tap. Right. We still have the high, among the highest water bills in the country. Oh, yeah. um, we are using bottled water, which is donated from generous people across the country. Uh, as far as I know, the governor hasn't bought us any water. The city of Flint hasn't bought any water. The monies donated by celebrities have been turned over to large nonprofit organizations for the disbursement. However, this money is not hitting the streets in terms right. of aiding people. Mm -hmm. uh, these educational programs they're having and these fake town hall meetings are all staged. Mm -hmm. uh, the people presenting information are people that are affiliated with the traditional system in mm -hmm. Flint and the mayor's organizations. Um, so if, I don't need you to tell me uh, what not to eat or what to eat in relation to lead poisoning. We can look that up on the internet. I don't need a hand, hand yeah. bill that tells me information that's freely yeah. available to anybody who has access to the internet or any type okay. of nutrition yeah. book. The problem is that things are not being done. We've been delivering water to the senior citizens because uh -huh. in spite of a legal document requiring the city to do that, it's not being done. The okay. mayor has not put together a plan for that. Where is that money going then? I keep hearing about, oh, we're getting granted money for this and for that. Uh, and uh, yeah, what, we're, what, It's going it probably to nonprofit organizations and so that people who are actually out here delivering water and looking out for senior citizens and the disabled and children in the community are, are doing it out of our own pockets and out of love for our neighbor. Um, to have to actually apply for granted money that's supposed to go for the citizens, yeah. in my opinion, is ridiculous. Where do, think, where do you think that money's going? I, th I know that the money's being sent to large nonprofits. So you think that the non large nonprofits, some of them, maybe we should call them out and say, where's our water and our services I and all that? I think so, because if people do not address the issue at hand, that money will be gone as much of it probably already is gone and we will not know what happened and yet people will be told the world all over the world that things are better and different they're not 16 people have died from legionnaires in the city of Flint that is still happening it's still happening we still can't use our tap water now they're making a move to start, um, if you can't pay your water bill, they're actually going to put liens on people's property and remove it from them. That's not something that, if you campaign on the water issue, it's presumed by the people who voted for you that you're going to actually attack the problem and bring some resolution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is not happening. When people are being put out of their apartments because the landlord's um, lease says, you know, rent is included in rent is utilities and water bills should be paid. When you find that the landlord has not paid their bill, but you've paid your rent, oh, people wow. are being put out on wow. the streets. Wow. Um, so it's hard to live in Flint now, isn't it? I mean, you know, it really, it's really it really is. Yeah. So maybe they're trying to chase everybody away so they can take over, huh? Well, it wouldn't be the first time in the history of the world that um, land is the one thing we're not getting any more of. So mm -hmm. if you want to um, sell off a city's assets to yeah. the the cheapest bidder or the uh -huh. best bidder, the best thing to do is to um, run get, the, people off, re run the yeah. people off their property. And when you Cheap talk about land, poor yeah. people, and Flint yeah. has a poor population, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's not so much a race issue in the city of Flint, it's an economic um, issue. The people who have money there are going to continue to make sure they survive and they maintain the status quo for them. The rest of the people who are not wealthy or in these inner circles or cliques as you want to as you yeah. call them, you are placed in a position of you have to fight for your life. 
You have to, and by that I mean, you have to say, this is wrong. Let the record show that this is wrong. I'm objecting to it. It's unreasonable to expect yeah. elderly people to choose between yeah. water, food, a heating that's bill, amazing. medication. Yeah. That's an undue burden on the populace. Yeah. And unfortunately, if uh, the people in the People's Army and other organizations, grassroots organizations, if we don't continue to come to the aid of our neighbor, we already know that the mayor and her administration are not going to do that. And we know that the governor is not going to do that. Um, when you give contracts to people and they're now saying things like, you don't have to be a licensed plumber to work on the pipe replacement for the city of Flint. It's oh, like, so what kinds uh, of people are on the payroll now? Well, yeah, and it's the history <laughs> of you're shortcutting. That's why you're yeah. in the situation that you're in in the first yeah. place. Why would you continue to operate on the, let's do this as cheaply as possible? Yeah. Because that's why the water's poisoned in the first place. Yep. So, you know, I, I got to ask you uh, though a little bit about the People's Army. That sounds so familiar, but I'm not sure. Is this a new or an old organization, well, or a, what is a, it? It's a common name that people often use when they're banding together to fight a traditional system that's working against it. This is a group of people who's relatively new and form informing. But the people involved in it are people who have been volunteering and serving their country and serving their community for years. Yeah. So yeah. it's not Great. a it's it's just a hands on and neighbor if, if to neighbor people, approach. If more people wanted to get involved with the People's Army, how could they find out more? Are you on Facebook? Or? We're on Facebook. Um, and that's all you need to do is just yeah. come and look for us okay. on Facebook. We post regularly. Um, no justice. No peace. No justice. No, no peace. peace. No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! Water is a right! Water is a right! Hi! Hi! How are you? Thank you so much thank for talking. Is there anything else you wanted to say? Just thank you for coming out and tell someone else the story because if people don't share the story, it will not be reported in the traditional media. Yeah. Our mayor is quite a charming young woman. <laughs> she makes a great yeah. presentation, oh, okay. and once you look look past the right. image that she's projecting, mm -hmm. you see that there's yeah. no substance there whatsoever. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Jenny! Hey. Jenny! Hey. <laughs> please help thanks, us. Thanks for, thanks for being here. Well, yeah. Could you please just come to Flint and Figure out where the money's going. The, yeah. She's not doing anything Pardon. to help us. Who's not? The mayor. It's Kelly. We How recalled with Joe Stanley. Why would we want him at our side? <laughs> we don't want him there. Me doing the so you can meet a whole different party if I could. Yeah. Three issues that I have concern about continuation of the law. Veteran services, number 47 out of 50 when it comes to services of veterans. And then the job situation for most of the three people out here. So my first time. Whatever you can do yeah. in order to uh, keep those issues up front for at least the city of Flint. Yeah. That'd be great. You know, because the water infrastructure itself is, is part of it, as you right, know. I right. mean, that's the, the, uh, the system for replacing the pipes is slower than the money. When the money comes in faster, then they can actually pull and replace pipes. But yeah. in the long term, it really is about jobs, about education. Right. And so the, um, it's about, about 800 jobs up now. I mean, it's been, we took our, our MEDC team, put them right on the ground in Flint, and just said, go after it. I mean, people need jobs. That's the deal in the, in the long term. Now, the only problem that I have is that Flint does not have the capacity to run the water treatment plant and don't have the workers. Is there any way that you can get a team down there to convince them that, hey, we need to do something other than trying to get this treatment plant going like they want to because they don't, we don't have the funds for that. And they keep on asking the state for money and the state's saying we don't have the money. So it's an ongoing thing and nothing's moving. All we got is 600 lines changed. Well, over the, over the long term, in terms of whatever the, the, the permanent ongoing solution is, in the meantime, it's being bought pre-treated right. and then distributed through the system, and parts of that system need to be replaced. The, um, and then, but when it comes to the permanent long-term solution, 
I mean, at that point, you have to have the people, whether it's in partnership with the county or whether it's the, the city, uh, the people have to be experts at what, what they're doing. So, right. I mean, it's, uh, that's something that I, I believe everybody is committed to make sure, making sure that it happens. I mean, it's, I mean, this whole thing, that none of it should have ever happened. But now when it comes to replacing the, uh, replacing the pipes, and people can get that or understand that, but ultimately, unless you have the right, people have the right educational opportunities, and there's the nutritional programs that have been in place right. now, too, that make a big difference in the early childhood education. I don't know if you saw what happened at Cummings, uh, but when Cummings was reopened as the uh, Great Expectations Early Childhood Center, it's a real wraparound mm -hmm. uh, system, and it's like a... It's like a pilot, but I hope that it becomes a standard for. Uh, for now, what we have like now, another big problem that we have in this land is communication. A lot of people don't know where to take their kids for checkups, and then you know they just voted to take Obamacare, and you know we had the expansion and all that included in the Obamacare. Now, people are fearful of that. Is there something, some type of uh, is that thing that y'all can low? tell us? Is this going to be exempt for the city of Flint if they do away with Obamacare and no, I, medical expenses? I believe that the um, that the, the waiver that Flint is covered under is not part of the Affordable Care Act. It's much under regular Medicaid. Mm -hmm. um, but that's something we probably ought to, George, maybe I could, um, okay. if, if you could be a good person to follow up with. I don't know for sure. And we don't even really know for sure what's going to happen uh, in terms of the long term. As well. and, and, uh, and, DC in terms of what they're what type of changes they're going to make um, and, and what they do with Medicaid what they do with the rest of the right. ACA so um, those are there are a bunch of big questions out there right now right. but um, but there is a separate waiver just for Flint on Medicaid okay and uh, so I don't I don't know for sure what what see but the communication isn't make. getting out there to where people are knowing yeah. where to take the kid or you know which age group Sure. Uh, who's covered? Because you had TTH Jones, you had like my blood, white blood cells went crazy out the roof. But I'm not covered because I'm not 21 years and under. So you have people that don't know if they can go to certain uh, doctors or if they have any type of yeah. medical assistance. So we're not getting any type of communication, communication lines, kind of like zilch. Right now. Well, Even though there are a lot of organizations, a lot of things going on, it's still. It's still stagnant on how it's reaching the masses. Yeah. You know, and and uh, meetings I go to, those that aren't affected by it are trying to figure out how to get to the people that are affected by it. And I constantly say, you get some of those people in the meetings. Yeah. You get people that that live in the community to actually tell and be a part of the conversation. Now on Thursdays, are they still uh, blocking us from being able to uh, record? Or live stream. Um, I'm not sure. Can you can you speak to them and ask them? Can we start live streaming? Because a lot of us uh, activists are able to live stream. On Facebook, a lot of people, people on our watch Facebook those pages. Yeah. And if we don't have well, what is it? High, what is it you're trying to? You want to? Live oh, stream? you know, Thursdays, meetings that Mr. Uh, Paul uh, Paul Laurie uh, Laurie the governor's guy uh, uh, Rich that Rich oh, comes oh, to. Oh, the Rich. Shows and and uh, the, the, those meetings, if we can get those stream. That'd be great, oh, oh. And, and I think they allow for a minute us to record, but yeah. it's like off and on. Well, can know. we um, just from this? Why don't we um, just we'll find a time when we can get together, get rich Most too. Definitely. We'll just get together and talk about it. I, yeah. I love to. Right. That's Thank good. You. Love to. Okay. I'll just see if I can get your name. George F. Grundy the second. And why are you at the state capitol today? Well, today is the state of the state address from uh, our current governor, Snyder. And I'm here uh, to, oh! <laughs> to be able to stand on my First Amendment rights and protest what's going on and what's not going on. Uh, it's more so what's not going on to me. So, like, I'm a veteran. I'm a Marine Corps veteran. And Michigan is number 47 out of 50 states when it comes to services, but we have one of the highest veteran populations in the country. So. That means wow. that the services that we receive and the the care that we get is at the bottom of the barrel, even though we have one of the larger populations. Yeah, that's so and bad. we sacrifice so yeah. much throughout the, 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 the years is, as there, a, a state. Is there a particular organization that you're with? Well, I, I started a nonprofit called Vine Veterans of Now, okay. which is in Flint, Michigan. Okay. And uh, we, we uh, do everything we can to help veterans and the community alike. 
uh, to advance. What, which website? Or your Facebook? Or uh, you can go to my Facebook, Georgia Freddy the Second, and go to Vaughn Veterans of Now, uh, the page, and look and see what we do and what we've done and what we're going to be doing. Great, great. Okay, cool. Did you, anything else you wanted to say? Yeah, the water. That's the also water. something that hasn't oh, been man, done. Man, yeah. You know, uh, regardless of the filter myth or the the issues that have been said to be taken care of, there are zero people that can safely drink the water without filters. What so, about taking baths and showers? Taking baths, showers. all those different things. You know, I, I, I you inhale I, that and it gives you the I wash in the in the water and I have a filtration system and I still uh, have issues with the water. Mm -hmm. You know, but those are things that we need to stay on top of. You know, uh, they say they're doing their job. We need to make sure they're doing their job. We need to not uh, get tired and weary of anything until the job is finished. Yeah. And finished in a timely manner. Yes. Because the financing is out there in order to produce results. So we need to keep people accountable to do their job so we can get results. Great, great. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Okay. So, water is life. Water is life. Okay, and who are you? Hey, I'm Maggie Martin. Uh, I'm with Iraq Veterans Against the War, soon to be about face. Um, and I came here to meet up with veterans in Flint. And oh, are you a veteran of the Iraq War? I am. Uh, I was in the Army from 2001 to 2006. Hmm. Oh, the questions I could ask you. Do you want to talk about Flint, though, now? And then I'll ask my questions. <laughs> sure. Um, okay. Well, I'm here talking to these folks, trying to figure out if uh, we can bring a mobilization of veterans to come support the people of Flint. Um, we connected first when we were in Standing Rock. To okay, well, the first thing I wanted to ask you is that I know that when you're in the military, sometimes you're not allowed to voice your opinion, but you are past military, so you're not under that. Yeah, I've been out for 10 years, and actually, when you're in the military, you can still speak out. There are uh, regulations about what you can do in uniform and stuff like that, but they make it feel like you have no rights, and they might um, you know, treat you poorly for exercising your rights, but people do have a right to speak out, and they have a right to resist. So what is your biggest concern in the next four years? Um, Man, I don't even know where to start because our incoming president is such a wild card. You know, there's there's racism against immigrants, against um, Latinos, Mexicans. There's um, racism against Muslim folks within this country. Um, there's his desire to privatize the VA, um, destroy the VA institution. Um, so I don't know. Those are all things that I'm really I'm worried about, and now losing healthcare. Well, how, from a military coming from the military, um, are, how do you feel about like the nuclear question? I mean, what do you worry about as far as other hostile countries? Well, it's clear that Donald Trump can't keep a cool head and make smart decisions, and you know, having a loose cannon as the head of our as our commander-in-chief of our military is really frightening and I think it's frightening for people from within the military as well um, and so you know I'm, I'm not sure what's gonna happen if the military leadership will support Donald Trump and, and what he wants to do if people within the military will feel like they can stay in the service or if they'll be trying to figure out ways to get out as conscientious objectors or um, not re-enlisting. Okay yeah it is scary. Listening to the protesters outside the Republican-led State of the State address, I wondered, what would a Republican world look like? Would the poor be expected to just shut up and die? The problem with liberals is old. We stay informed, we read everything, we vow not to support anyone who isn't on our side of an issue, and we vote our conscience, even if that means voting for a candidate that has no chance of winning. We are also the quickest to throw our candidate under the bus if they differ on an issue. The problem is that we will never meet any other person who agrees with our views 100% of the time, let alone a candidate that does. And this need to be honest and true to 100% of our convictions is the sore spot that the conservatives keep punching us in.